Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. Welcome in, Winning Cures Everything, number 222. This is the Tuesday, August 14th edition of the show. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. Today we got a whole lot for you. We are going through college football previews. We're doing Memphis uh, Memphis's football preview. We're doing the Big Ten, both divisions. We uh, have an interview with Chris Felica as well. Lots to talk about. First off, you know the deal. MyBookie.ag sponsors the show. They got the best online sports book, the best odds, the best layout, everything you could possibly need. MyBookie.ag. Use promo code WCE50, and they'll give you a 50% deposit bonus. You don't get much better than that. So go check it out. MyBookie.ag. Promo code WCE50, 50% deposit bonus. They'll give you free money. Nothing is better than free money. On top of that, the show is sponsored by winningcureseverything.com. It's our website. It's what we do. Go check it out there. We're going to jump out of this. We're getting right into Memphis Football Preview. All right. We are from Memphis. Every year we do a Memphis Football Preview. Let's go ahead and jump into this. We're going through all of it. The Memphis Tigers last year went, what, 11, 10 and 3? No. No, 11 and 3. 11 and 2. Well, if you count the bowl loss. But we're not counting nah, the bowl. I don't loss. count bowls. Forget the bowl. I don't count bowls. All right, so eleven and two. Well, no, no, no. It was it was ten and two because they uh, they lost a game. They lost it like as in it didn't happen. They were supposed to play Georgia State. That oh, the game, game got, got rescheduled. All that kind of stuff because of the uh, the hurricane. Correct. So, uh, but ten and two made it to the uh, to the AAC championship game. Not too shabby. Let's look ahead though. Two thousand eighteen. Look, they have got seven offensive starters back. You're replacing quarterback Riley Ferguson and wide receiver Anthony Miller, who accounted for a ton of offense. Now, Ferguson and Miller broke school records. They were fantastic. How do you replace that? Uh, Anthony Miller is going to be really hard to replace, but they had a bunch of wide receivers they used last year. Ferguson, always tough to replace the quarterback. But, man, I kind of think that – I like the kid from Arizona State, I, I Brady Davis. Say, I think I think they're doing a really good job of reloading talent at the level of football that they play in the AAC. Man, I I think they are one of these teams that just year in year out they're going to win ten games. I I think you're probably right. It's not Brady Davis. It's Brady White. I think Brady Davis was a, a quarterback, and I think he transferred out. The quarterback <laughs> battle is between rising junior David Moore. Correct. He's been in the system for a while. He's been at Memphis for a while. And then Arizona State grad transfer Brady White. He's got two years of eligibility left. Look, this guy was the number four pro-style quarterback recruit in 2015. He was ranked ahead of Washington's Jake Browning, Missouri's Drew Locke. Like, this dude's – he's, he's got legit. talent. He's but he, real. But he couldn't win the job at Arizona State. It's okay. So – and that's fine. He's a grad transfer now. He's following Mike Norvell. Mike Norvell actually recruited him to Arizona State. Correct. Uh, look for DeMonte Coxie to do a good job filling Miller's shoes this year. He's not going to do what Miller did, but he's still talented. Uh, the running back position is, is going to be the strong point loaded. of this offense. Loaded. Totally loaded. Uh, Daryl Henderson, Tony Pollard, Patrick Taylor, Sam Kraft is back for his sixth year. They're going to be calling him Dr. Kraft at some point. That's right. Uh, running behind four starters on the offensive line. Four returning yeah, starters. Yeah, returning the whole line almost. Now, it, the biggest thing for me is going to be defense. But they didn't play good defense last year. I don't but think that that's they, they played better defense last year than they did the year before. They they got better. It was a bend, don't break. They, well, they bend, don't break. They didn't give up. But they also – they're really opportunistic in the sense they get turnovers – which means when they go after the ball and not go after tackles or breakups, sometimes the guys catch the ball. Yeah. But if they catch it, then they've turned the game completely around. Yeah. They, because they score on every drive. The biggest thing this year is senior linebacker, sixth-year senior linebacker Jackson Dillon is back. He is an absolute team leader. It, every time he's been on the field, he runs that team. He's like the quarterback of the defense. So the fact that he is back, he is healthy. Like it, last year, he was he wasn't fully healthy, right? And he was gone after the first game for the whole year. So he got a medical redshirt, got a sixth year of eligibility. Uh, they're going to miss Jannard Avery, fifth round pick to the Browns. But with T.J. Carter leading the secondary, Austin Hall, Jonathan Wilson, more guys leading the group, they should be significantly better this year than they were last year because 
They played a whole lot of freshmen and sophomores last year. Whole lot. So, we're talking a lot about players. We, we haven't brought up coaching at all. And in college football, football in general, you know how much I value coaching. Everybody says players win games, players win championships. But it seems like the same coaches, no matter what players come in town, continue to do well, and other coaches just continue to lose jobs. I, I think Mike Norvell, if not the best coach in the conference, the second best coach to Charlie Strong. I think he might be better than Charlie Strong. See, I think I, you can, and I, you and I disagree on that. I think Charlie Strong is a unbelievable coach. I'm not saying that he's a bad coach. I just think that Mike Norvell might be better. He's really good. He's really he's young. He's really, really good. And he's got a system that works. He understands how to recruit really well. Uh, well, you got him going. I, what's look, the, hang on. What's the over-under for this team? I didn't even the look over. You know what? I didn't even – oh, no, no, no. I did look at that. It's uh, The over-under is eight and a half. Oh, my goodness gracious. Yeah. Got to go cash some money. I'm going over. Step. I'm going to tell you that. I'm going right. over. Um, look. Let's just go through the schedule because okay. it's a one team thing. Let's let's do one, this. One team. Saturday, right. September first, they got Mercer at home. That's a win. Saturday, September eighth, I think we might be different on this. Okay. At Navy. All right. I got a loss there. Because they got like six months to prepare for that game, right? <laughs> I just think that Navy has always had Memphis's number. Correct, but they always play Navy in the middle of the end of the season where they've got one week to prepare for that option. Yeah, the the fact that it's early option does help Memphis. teams always lose when teams have long times to prepare for them. That's why they can't win bowl games. Uh, you might you might have a point there. All right, so at Navy, second game of the year, you don't really have to prep for Mercer. No. You think they got to win there? Sure. I didn't really do the wins and losses thing. I know how you do. Yeah, I, let's I go know. ahead. No, we'll, I'll give it a win. I'll okay, give, it a give it a win. Let's just do it. Uh, well, you know, what? let's just let's give the record, and then we'll go through and we'll see where you think they might have landmines. How's okay. that? Yeah, I got them know. going ten and two, seven and one in the AAC, and I've got them hosting UCF in the conference championship game. In what the are the two games you got them losing? Because you do this, I've got them losing at Missouri and at Navy and at Navy. Okay, those are two really tough games. I got them eleven and one because I didn't have the stones to make them go undefeated. But you thought it was a chance. I don't. There's nobody on this team that scares me. Going into an SEC stadium on the road is a tough thing to do at any time. I do not what? believe in this Missouri team. They do not scare me. I think Memphis I don't is better from top to bottom at every level of the game than Missouri, and they're better at coaching than Missouri. Just because Missouri's in a big boy school doesn't mean anything to me. Here is the only problem that I've got with that. Okay. They play UCF the week before. Yeah, but this is not Scott Frost's UCF, and this is not – they lost so much talent. This UCF team's going to have a couple losses. I, I'm if with we you. we were going to do a breakdown of UCF, they're not going to be close the, but, to the team they were last but year. But that this – it's not that. It's not that that I'm worried about. Okay. It is the emotional aspect of it because and you are hosting it, – it is the biggest home game. It is the biggest home that game. That Memphis has all year. And it's after they play at Tulane and they host UConn. And then Saturday, October 13th, they've got UCF at home. And I think they're going to be so amped up. And they, they may blow UCF right. out. Well, they could easily but, lose one of these two games. Yeah. I don't think – like I said, I didn't have the stones to have them going undefeated. I think they'll step on a landmine somewhere. But, I, you know. After the Missouri nobody, game – Nobody on this team scared – I mean, nobody on the schedule scares me. The only thing I wanted to look for as soon as the schedule came out was, do they play South Florida? And where is that and no. game? And they're not on the schedule. Yeah. And you know what? That made me want to say 12 and 0. Let's just do it. Well, here's, here's, let's go through the whole thing. All right. Now, so, you, now we can run through it. September 1st, Mercer. September 8th, at Navy. September 14th, it's a Friday night. They Georgia host State. Georgia State. Saturday, September 22nd, South Alabama comes to the Liberty Bowl. Friday, September 28th, at Tulane. That's one of those triple option teams. Yeah, it could be, it could be wonky. And it's a short week. Really well-coached team. Too. Yeah, Tulane's, Willie Fritz is Tulane's phenomenal. a great coach. Um, but it's a short week, Friday night. It, it's Going to play the option. It could, yeah. be, it could be the game they lose. It could be. Uh, then you've got Saturday, October 6th, UConn comes they're to Memphis. Saturday, October 13th, UCF. I don't think they're losing that. Because I think they're going to be hyped for that. Yeah. They lost to them twice last exactly. year. Exactly. Emotional game. Yeah. Uh, and they got embarrassed in one of them. Oh, I mean, just yeah. awful. Uh, Saturday, October 20th at Missouri, which is immediately following UCF. That's just a, a, a bad scheduling move. Um, it, it's nobody's fault, but no. like 
Golly, it, you're so emotionally hyped for UCF, and then you got to go to Missouri. Like, but I think they can do know. that just because Missouri is on the road. It's easy to get. You don't ever let your guard down when you go on the road. Agreed. I think if those games were reversed, I'd be more afraid of Central Florida. Yeah, because you whichever let, one was first, you're you, going to be hyped up. You for that let one. your guard down at home really easily. You're you're yeah. good at chalk up W's at home. You're right. You're right. Uh, then we've got Saturday, November third, at East Carolina, November tenth. Tulsa comes to the Liberty Bowl Friday, November 16th at SMU. Sonny Dykes is back in the league. Yeah, I, I just don't know what I think about SMU yet. I need to watch I don't either. I, need, I, I don't know enough about that team now that Morrison's gone, and I just need to see what they're going to look like yeah. before I judge them so at all. I, I do think that Memphis has more talent than SMU, so that you know, oh, no. shouldn't be a problem. I think and they then, got the most talent in the conference other than maybe South Florida. Yeah, you might be right. Uh, or I mean, honestly, UCF has recruited really well too, and they lost a lot of experience. Saw, they but, lost so many starters. I wouldn't be able to tell you who any of these new backups are coming to well, play. So they've still got McKenzie uh, Melton or whatever his name is, the the quarterback. Correct. I should know. No, they that didn't. Name. No, they didn't God lose him. Bless no, America. Yeah. So they got him back. They got the running back back. They, they lost you know, a lot. On a defense, lot on defense. A lot yeah. on defense. Not that they were great on defense anyway, <laughs> but uh, yeah, but still, um, some of those guys were good. Houston comes in Friday, November twenty third. And like that's the, the end of the have, schedule. I like the way of Houston at the end of the year at home. If, I, if that I was like a that. road game, I would think that could easily be a landmine. They and it, it almost season. was last year. I know. They they have a great season. Then they end the season on the road, and they kind of let down. That's one I just hope they don't get too big for the britches, chalk up the W, and, and lose. But I got them 11. I'll tell you this, 8.5. I don't know that we can go down to gold strike and get 8.5 as a number. I mean, they might have nine. I think MGM is going to inflate that number being so close to Memphis. We'll, we'll have to check that out at Gold Strike. We'll have to see. Just because I cannot fathom them losing nine, eight games. You know, not eight games, sorry. Four, four of these games. I just can't. I, I can't either. I don't see four losses anywhere on here. Now, I could be completely wrong. The, at Navy, at Missouri, and UCF. And then maybe and then maybe, maybe one of the others. But that's Houston, here's the deal. If they maybe lose to Tulane, I don't think they lose one of the others. Like yeah. I, I think there's like this pendulum thing to where, yeah, you got a three game stretch of tough games, and you might lose two, but you're not going to lose all three. It's just not the way the ball bounces. Yeah, you're probably right. You're probably right. All right, so to wrap it up, I got them ten and two, seven and one in the AAC, and I've got them winning the conference this year in the Liberty Bowl. I got them going to a New Year's Six Bowl. Yeah, I think they're going to be the. I need to see what South Florida does and who wins that championship game. I think the winner of that championship game gets the New Year's Six Bowl game. I, I, a lot of people like Boise State. I'm not so high on Boise State. I'm going to tell you this. If if the South Florida Memphis winner only has one or two losses and Boise has one or two losses, the South Florida Memphis winner is going to go. Yeah. They're going to go over Boise. That They're better programs for the last couple of years. They play better talent, I think. They're better conferences. Um I just think it's a it's a better conference in the Mountain West. I think you're probably right. All right, so that wraps up the Memphis prediction. Memphis, you got a lot to look forward to this year. Now for the rankings. This week, we have decided to rank college football uniforms. I like it. I like it. It's right, such now, a good one because everybody has their own opinion. Oh, everyone right? has their own opinion. So I, if you haven't seen this before, by the way, we do it in a draft format. Correct. So we each have 10, and... And we draft it out. And Chris, I believe you start this week. I'm going to start this week, and I'm, and and I'm going to take two teams. I'm going to cheat, and we can make them either one or they can be one, two in any order you want. But I don't know that this is negotiable. I don't know that I'm willing to budge on either of these. And this is not patriotic bullcrap that we're just throwing out there. The Army Navy uniforms for the last couple of years when they play each other are unbelievable they they have they have done things so unique with the helmets and with the jerseys and everything that it's one of the things that got me more excited for that game than I used to and I wouldn't know who to put one and who to put two but but those I think we start the list with those two I'll tell you who to put one going to put navy one okay that navy's alternate from last year with the anchor logo the old school numbers all that Fantastic, yeah. So uh, they put the ships on the helmet, yeah. And then and then, the, but Army did the same thing. They were putting like battle tanks and different stuff on the helmet. I, mean, I just thought it was pretty unbelievable. 
that that's my one and two. We're gonna do my my one will be the Army Navy. Yeah, game. you you can you can count both uniforms. of them. There we go. You can you can do both of them. All right. Uh, number two, my uh, my number one, but number two on this list, I'm gonna go with Penn State. Okay. I love Penn State's uniform. It is, and I'm I'm just a traditional. I think our our I think our uniforms are gonna be way different. There might not be any on my 10 that you have, and there might not be any on your 10 that I have. That's entirely possible. It's entirely possible. Look, Penn State is my number two. Okay. I just I like the all-white or the all-white with the with the navy Navy's, blue. Yep. Um, I'm a big fan of that. It's just it's so clean. It's so cool looking, and especially in the middle of a whiteout. Like the Ohio State this game or Ohio State game this year is going to be unreal. Yeah. So, yeah. it's so Penn State the white uniform or Great. white helmet, that's me, number two. So I'm going to take a traditional school for number three. Okay. But not the traditional uniform. The Notre Dame green clover unis are just okay. incredible I can get, to me. I can get down with that. I love when they come out and they break out the green unis. Now, they don't have a great record in the green unis. But when they break <laughs> out the green unis, I get excited, and it's one of the few times if I know they're wearing them, I got money on Notre Dame that day. Okay. I, okay. I'm liking that game. All right. So, we got number one, Army-Navy. Number two, Penn State. Number three, Notre Dame Green Unis. Yep. Who you got? Number four, traditionalist. I'm going Alabama number four. All right. Alabama, the in, in the home jersey more so than the away jersey. It, the crimson jersey, the crimson helmet with the white lettering, like it is about as as college football as you can get. Right, it's just you see that, and it just it oozes college football. Yeah, I love it, and that's fine. I mean, it's so, your school, and I get that. My problem with some of the traditional uniforms, especially the Alabama crimson and the Ohio State crimson and the Oklahoma crimson, is just like you know, you don't know who if they took the name off the jersey and they all stood three of them next to each other, nobody would be able to tell who's who. Okay, I'm with you. And, and and so that's just my and that that is not the Alabama hate. It's just it's not you. Penn State. It's not is different because it's white and navy, and nobody else really has that. That's yeah. that big of a boy. Next pick for me, the Ole Miss Powder Blues. Now I have a. I heart. had that on my list. I have. Oh, I can't believe that. Yeah. I I have a love for the Powder Blues. I think my favorite uniform in in the NFL is also the Charger Powder Blue. I don't know what it is. I really like that color. Have you, have you got North Carolina on there? <laughs> they're at the, with their baby blues. They're at the bottom. Okay. But yes, they, they, they made my list. So, But the <laughs> Ole Miss Powder Blues, I'm a big, big fan of. Okay. All right. So the Ole Miss Powder Blue is your number five, right? That's our number five. All right. So number six for me is, uh, let's see, where am I? Oh, LSU. Oh, I love it. Look now, do you like the purple or do you like no, the traditional white? I like the in, traditional in white at the helmet with the uh, with the tiger and the, or, I mean it's yeah like everything about that. It's traditionalist. It's but it it's it's very unique. You know no, whose is, helmet it that is. It is different. That's right. So I, I love LSU. LSU is number six for me. I wish that LSU did more with the tiger eye logo, the center the fifty yard line. Logo that's just a tiger eye. Yeah, that, that'd I be wish fun. They did more. Almost all the LSU paraphernalia that I own has that logo on it, and it's kind of hard to find. Yeah. My next pick, which would number be number seven, our number seven, I've only seen worn once. At Halloween, see when I, when I pick this stuff, I'm not just picking the uniforms they wear all the time. A couple of years back, Tennessee played a big Halloween game, 2009 against South Carolina. South Carolina, and they came out with some black unis with that orange that orange looks awesome with that black uniform i was super pumped not a tennessee fan growing up didn't like them to so the tennessee halloween but, black that was lane kiffin's year that, yeah it was lane kiffin's year and that whole stadium was black and orange and i immediately thought every year some school for halloween should be playing on halloween i don't care if it falls on a monday tuesday sunday i don't care <laughs> halloween two schools need to play they need to schedule it, and Nike, Under Armour, Adidas, whoever's got the contract needs to make the home team a black uni. Back in like the Virginia day, Virginia Tech with the orange, Auburn with the orange. Back in the day, Florida LSU the orange, and Ole Miss like, used to always play on the week of Halloween. That was their rivalry week. Yeah, and I wish that we would go back to that schedule, and I wish the home team would get the black uni because they're both sponsored by Nike. 
Nike says, home team gets the black uni. I think the black with the red would look amazing. Oh, yeah, I think the would. black with the purple would look amazing. Or the or with the – I just think it's, it's black funny uniforms are that pretty, you, pretty it, awesome. It's funny that you bring that up. The, the UT Halloween black is number seven. Uh, number eight – for me, is actually Washington's all black uniforms with the oh, purple lettering. Yeah, yeah, okay. And so I didn't even I, think of that. I love that it, it's look. They got the black pants, black jersey, black helmet with that purple W That's on right. it, and and the on the white, black jersey, the white outline because yep. purple and black are hard to see. But but, but when but you, you got an outline on it, you outline it with white, it pops, man. It's same thing with the uh, same thing with the numbers. Yep. And it, I don't think it's I don't think it's white. I think it's like a light gold. Yeah, or something. Yeah, because that's your other color. gold and purple. That's right. But. Yeah, it's uh, so number number eight is Washington's all black uniforms with the purple lettering. All right, number nine for me. I'm gonna go a little off course here. I'm gonna go with the recent newish Memphis, Tennessee whites. Are you Memphis talking about the Tiger. one with the uh, the nine hundred one on the on the helmet? No, I like the, the, I like the the white stripe. helmet with the tiger stripes. Okay, and the all white uniforms with a little blue trim, just a little blue trim and blue numbers. I really like the Memphis Whites. I, I do like that. I'm a, I'm a big, big fan of those. All right, number 10. This may seem a little weird. Okay. I like TCU's all purple uniforms. TCU's on my list, too. They, I'm, they've I'm got the horned fan. frog on yeah. the helmet, and it is it just pops because that color purple, for whatever reason, pops on the screen, especially on HDs now, right? I mean, it's it's crazy. But – yeah, that's it. to round out the top ten. TCU's all purple uniform is awesome. Looking. So, so you know, so you know, I'm a big TCU fan. I like them. I root for them in the Big Twelve all the time. I, I, and it's a lot of it. Hey, you're, you're a Gary Patterson fan. I'm a, a lot of it is Gary Patterson. Can we agree that the Horn Frog is one of the coolest mascots of all time? <laughs> like mascots in the SEC are a thing but, right now because Ole Miss is going through their thing with the Land, the land Shark. shark. And it's Tony like, the yeah. Land Shark. But but how I will tell you this. My team is a tiger, and tigers are cool, but like they're kind of like uh, we can't think very of anything. unique. Be a tiger. Yeah, there's, there's a the, bunch. Of, there's Auburn tigers. The and horn it, frog has to be yeah. my favorite. If you said what's your favorite college mascot, I think it's TCU's horn frog. It, it doesn't get much better than a horn frog. When it's on the side of that helmet, that's a cool looking logo. Man. I I agree with you. So, I agree with you. Sweet. All right. So you got uh, any, to, you got any uh, like runners up or that we, anything we didn't honorable mention? Yeah, um, that's it. That's what we call it. So them. I've got Virginia Tech, it just their normal uniform. I, I do like their traditional uniforms. Um, I got Michigan State. Uh, you you took my Ole Miss powder blue. Okay. Uh, Michigan State's traditional like green uniform because it, the green with the uh, the Spartan on the helmet and all that that that's awesome. And I'm not a fan of them, but that's Auburn, yeah, like the the AU logo on that white helmet pops, and it, then the jersey itself yeah. with the Auburn across the chest. Like if it's, you like it's traditional awesome. uniforms, the navy, orange, and white, the way they do it, it's very classic looking, clean looking. Yes. My runners up are what? What do we call that? Honorable, Honorable mention. So Man, I, 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 I would have if had we gone even further. USC's traditional look, uh, stuff. Yeah, I love that. I yeah. love USC. So you can obviously tell I'm just not a maroon guy. It's not. It's not a color that I'm a fan of. Or I can understand that. Oregon, all of them, <laughs> all of them. <laughs> <laughs> they've they've never walked out in a uniform where I didn't say, "Man, that's awesome." Yeah, I would if I had like blue chip talent, I would go and play at Oregon. I, I just yeah. would have just because I want all the gear. That I makes just, sense. That's it. That's all I want, and I wouldn't sell it. I don't care how broke I am. I just line my I'd wallpaper my house in it. Um, I like Boise State's uniforms a lot, um, especially I kind of like when they go white on the blue field. I think it looks cool with little yeah. orange trims. And then North Carolina, yeah. I mean, I, I like the powder blue. North Carolina, when they do the argyle with it, a little classic look. That's probably the most classic out of all of them. I think you're probably right. All right, here's the uh, the rundown. Uh, Army or Navy, whichever one you want to put number one, that's that's it. We'll, we'll go on and mark both of them. Together. Number two, Penn State, classic white uniform. Uh, or the – what well, either no, way, either Penn State uniform is good. Yeah, the, yeah. The white all white ones. or the, the Navy jersey, either one. Uh, Notre Dame, the green with the with the clover, like the four leaf clover. That's right. Uh, Alabama's traditional crimson jersey uniform. Number five is the Ole Miss powder blue. Uh, number six, LSU's traditional uniform, uh, the white the uniform. White, yeah. Number seven, UT's Halloween black uniform from back in two thousand nine. You'll probably never see it again. Yeah, but I don't know. 
That's but that shame, one time, man. it was cool. That's a shame, though, man. Uh, Washington's all-black uniforms with the purple lettering was number eight. Number nine, the Memphis Whites with the tiger stripe helmet. Number 10, TCU's all purple. I love one. it. That's All a right. good one. All right, that's going to wrap up the ranking for this week. All right, another college football preview. We're jumping into the Big Ten. We're going to start out this segment with the Big Ten East. Now, we'll start. We'll do alphabetical order. Okay. How's that? Yeah. Now, this, I'll go on and, and say this. This division has kind of turned into a dumpster fire. <laughs> if you look rough. through, Michigan State has had all the Larry Nasser stuff going on. Uh, Ohio State... Obviously, with the Urban Meyer situation, Penn State went through all their mess, uh, you know, years ago. Uh, they seem to have steadied the ship, though. And this and, weekend, and now Maryland with problems. We're recording this on Sunday evening, and uh, yeah, and DJ Durkin is now on uh, administrative, administrative leave. leave. Now, di- does Durkin's being there or not being there change their record for you? Uh, it did by one game. Okay, I'm not touching mine. I also did these rankings before the Urban Meyer stuff. Not changing it. So when you hear my number for Ohio State, that was with Urban Meyer coaching all 12 games. Okay. Okay. Cause I, do you think he's going to coach all 12? Uh, it's, uh, I'm, it's a... <laughs> no. No, the answer to that is no. He will not coach all 12. Okay. Okay. That sounds good to me. Let's start off with Indiana. Um, Woo! We're, look, getting, we're getting smoking hot when we're starting here. Their over-under is five <laughs> for this year. All right. Before you give me the record, did you go over or under? Uh... I'll, I'll I'll tell you I went even. Oh, all right. I went I went even. I've got them at five and seven. Look, they got seven starters back on offense. Only three are back on defense. And head coach Tom Allen is a former defensive coordinator. Defense is his thing, so they should be okay on defense. I don't know that they will be. I don't know that they're going to be all that good. Uh, they got a grad transfer from Arizona. His name is uh, Brandon Dawkins or Brandon Dawkins. Sorry. Uh, it looks like he's going to win the quarterback job. Tom Allen, defensive guy, they should be okay. But, I mean, my gosh, there's just so many losses on the schedule. Indiana does not have the talent to be able to keep up with some of these teams. Nope. If if they were going to beat Michigan, they should have beaten Michigan last year. That overtime game, You're Michigan not going to have weak. a lot of opportunities to beat no. these big teams. When you get them beat, you got to take it. you got to do it. They, they have a very easy beginning of the schedule, right? Um <laughs> but I'd say I say easy. It's easier than their conference schedule. Okay. But goodness, uh, I have them losing the first two games. You, <laughs> what did you have them going? Two and ten. Good lord. Two and ten. No they, respect for Indiana whatsoever. They are way better than that. All right. Way better than All that. All right. I so might I, change that Maryland win to a W. That'd give them three and nine. Uh, did you have them? It, so wait, you had Maryland, You had them losing to Maryland. I'm losing Maryland. I already had them beating Maryland. Yeah. See. So, but I, I got them losing to Purdue. I could, I could at easily Michigan, slip flip that at Minnesota, Penn State. Like their the their toss up games are all on the road. That's the problem because they got they got Penn State at home, they got Iowa at home. But their non conference game against Virginia, Virginia is a better team than they used to be. Virginia is getting better. I look, Bronco Mendenhall I agree. Is, is turning that program around. It takes a long time to rebuild at a place that I, rebuild. I don't know if they were ever built. Um, that has never had talent, but he is a really good coach. He l- agreed, but they do have Virginia at home. Yeah, it don't matter. It I, don't matter. I think it matters when it, when you got a coaching discrepancy. I don't know that home field matters that much. I'm going to go with five the better coach. Five and seven, Indiana. You I'm going to give them. I'm going to give them three and nine. I'll give them the Maryland win. Okay, all right. I'll take a W away from Maryland. Speaking of Maryland, speaking of Maryland, look, the mess down there right now. Uh, anonymous sources have come out and said that uh, DJ Durkin is running a uh, culturally unfit program. It, so, of course, there's like three staffers and the head coach that are placed on administrative leave right now. It didn't really change much for me. I Look, their over-under for Maryland was four and a half already. Okay. I had them five and seven. I now have them four and eight. So I will now have them five and seven. After I gave Indiana an extra W. Oh, so you had Maryland going to a bowl. Yeah, six and six. Yeah, they were really good last year. And it didn't matter who played at quarterback. The next man up kind of I mean, seemed they, to be better than anybody that's played for LSU in the last were, decade. I don't know that they were that good. I mean, they, they went four and eight last year. Yeah, but they went into Texas and they kicked the crap out of them week one. And they, then they, they, they got they their – They fell apart. They got 
decimated with injury. Yeah, but Gary. they get decimated with injury every they, year. Yeah, but you can't – I don't predict that. You can't predict it. When they were healthy, they beat the crap out of teams they shouldn't have beat. No, you're probably – yeah, you're so right on if, that. So if they're not – healthy then i can't i can't judge that no you're you're right you're right so, and maybe right. they're not healthy because dj durkin beats the crap out of this point uh I don't know. quarterback uh kasim hill is back uh from uh let's see he uh had an acl injury he, he is tore, he's tore it in the texas game yeah right? he is super explosive he was the one that i mean he looked wrecked, all world wrecked all world wrecked they uh they defense. get uh defensive end jesse uh anibonum no. and antibonum good enough whatever it so he, he he's back Look, he was a massive – like, he was their leading sack uh, producer. He was awesome. I think, I think awesome. they have talent, man. I know, I know they're Maryland, and we don't give them any respect. Well, they, the They've problem got for six me, and six talent. Easy. They, they have a tough, tough schedule. Well, yeah, it's they're in really this tough. Eastern Division. But they, but they got eight starters back on offense and five back on defense. It's not just that. Like, they start out with Texas. Yeah, and, and, then and Texas is going to be coming for blood. Yeah, and then they've got Temple. And, and after that, I mean, it's – like they've got at Bowling Green, which is a guaranteed W at least for them. Um, Should be, yep. But then you've got Minnesota at Michigan, Rutgers yeah, they get at home. Rutgers, they'll but beat them. Y- you play at Michigan, at Iowa, Michigan State at home, at Indiana, which is a toss up. Uh, you got Ohio State at home. You got at Penn State. Like, I don't know where the W's are coming from. So I got them at four and eight again. Well, I think they'll beat Illinois. I think they'll beat Bowling Green. I think they'll beat Temple. These are the four wins I've got. I've got them uh, at Bowling Green, Temple, Rutgers, and Illinois. All right. So the only ones I have other than that is I have Minnesota. That's the game that actually switched for me because of because of the whole Durkin situation. And that might be worth because it. I think PJ Fleck is is a really good coach. Oh, and, and that's it. And he's because got his I gave, guy. I just gave the other win to Indiana. So yeah, that would be the it. Okay. So so we you flipped on Minnesota and I'm not. I think they got more talent than Minnesota. I, hey, that's totally reasonable. Totally reasonable. Uh, let's move on from there. Michigan. Get to a big boy. Let's get to the big boys. Michigan. Their over-under is nine. This is uh, this is supposed to be the bad year, right? So their schedule, they got at Notre Dame, at Tough. Northwestern, at Michigan State, at Rutgers, at Ohio State. Four of those could easily be losses. Then they've also got Wisconsin at home, Penn State at home, uh, they got Nebraska at home. Like, I mean, this t- this is tough. That's a tough schedule. I think I'm going 11 and one. <laughs> and I think I think Jim Harbaugh has the. The best- only reason I am laughing about this is that I went through the schedule and I also have them 11 and one. I love this. And it is look. They got nine starters back on defense. They are. They, and that defense, how good was it last year? Oh, it was the offense was putrid, which is yeah, why the defense the, got beat when they got beat. Right, Shea Patterson is in at quarterback. I'm I gonna, think he will make an instant change here. I'm going to tell you that I think Shea Patterson could be. How many years of eligibility he's got left? Two. He's got two. I think Shea Patterson could be the best quarterback Jim Harbaugh's ever had. Uh, better than Andrew Luck? I think he could be. Okay, I think that you were out of your mind. I think he could be. Well, I don't know how great Andrew Luck is though. How good has he been? But who are you right now? What are you even talking about? I think Shea Patterson's good. I think you he think Shea Patterson really could be better than Andrew Luck? Well, if he comes into Michigan, he wins eleven and one and wins a national championship. It's something Andrew Luck never did. And then let's say he does something close to the same thing next year and makes the playoff. If he makes the playoffs two years back to back, then yeah, yeah, he's a better college player than Andrew Luck was. What is the what? what you've got him eleven and one. I know you don't like doing this, but what game do you see them losing? If I had to pick a game I think they're going to lose, I think they're going to lose a game at home to Wisconsin. You think to Wisconsin? Think to Wisconsin. Because I think this is the year Harbaugh gets all the monkeys off his back. So they, they've he, got Wisconsin, he, that they've he got at he Michigan, can't State. Beat Michigan State. He can't beat Ohio State. He can't beat his big rivals. I got him I losing think, at Ohio State. I think this is the year he beats all his rivals, but he loses to another team that's Really, really good. So eleven and one going to the conference title game. It, but you know this, I am a Harbaugh apologist. I know I am the one guy that lives around here that thinks the world of him. I I like quirky. I like weird. I think he's one of the best coaches in all of college football. And looking I think at the schedule, stud. I thought a lot of the same stuff. I think they lose to Ohio State. I think Ohio State I ends think, up in the conference championship I game. I think, but they that's kick me. Kick there, but I don't think it's close. I think they go into the horseshoe. I don't know what the 
what the money line would be right now or what the early point spread would be right now. Well, I guess I think it was Ohio State by a touchdown. I would I would take I would take Michigan right now and it wouldn't be close. If I could get those adjusted odds when you go into the sports book, which I love. I really wish I could be in Vegas for week one of the NFL and of college football because there's a bunch of lines that I think are just wrong and and I would be playing the adjusted lines where you can get mega points by laying more. One points. of the things I talked to Felica about, by the way, uh was how much the line has moved in that Notre Dame Michigan game. Yep. Right? So Michigan opened up as a six point underdog and now they are a three point favorite, favorite at Notre Dame. I think they realized uh we made a huge mistake. That's I, I wondered if it was maybe the Shea Patterson stuff or whatever, but man, it's that stuff's crazy. So look, Michigan did not have a single offensive lineman on any of Phil Steele's all conference teams. That's four of them. Okay. Four all conference teams. They didn't have a single guy represented. And they returned three starters from last year. Uh Karen Higdon, he's back, thousand yard running back. Uh he averaged six point one yards per carry last year. Uh, but they do have a tough schedule. They got Wisconsin at home at Notre Dame. We already went through all that. It's not going like, to be easy. It's not going to be easy, but I love that defense. I do, too. That defense is fantastic. I and think and defense and, and every, running the football wins everybody ball back game. And Shea Patterson. Yep. But they have a quarterback. I would say he's, he's world's better quarter. It's immeasurable the difference between him and all the quarterbacks that Harbaugh's had since being at Michigan. You are correct. So the Andrew Luck thing, probably a little hyperbole, little 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 trash on him, but – Everybody not named Andrew Luck that Tarball's ever coached in college? Yeah, I don't think it's close. Yeah, you're probably right. You're probably right. All right, let's try and uh, speed things up a little bit. We got okay. Michigan State next. Uh, their over-under is nine. This is my guy. I've got them going under the nine. I got them pushing it. So, it, but the I, I've got them eight and four. Nah, eight and four. Good. Here is where I see them losing. Okay. I've got them starting out five and oh. Correct. I, mean, we, I would agree with that. Then losing at Penn State. Losing at home to Michigan. I've got them losing to Ohio State. And then you are not going to believe this one. If you do the Rutgers thing, I'm going to knock Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. At Nebraska. Scott Frost. I think Scott Frost pulls off one big unforeseen upset. That would and I think right. that this is it. You that, know, I don't oh, think Nebraska is going to be great. That wouldn't shock me at all. But at home against Michigan State, I think that they will have their offense clicking at that point. Um, Michigan State has got 10 starters back on offense. They got nine back on defense. So, like, this is the perfect combination for D'Antonio. That Michigan-Michigan State game is going to be old school Alabama-LSU. Yes, it is. Auburn-LSU, like, bruising, hard nose, very little they're, scoring. They're running back. LJ is, Scott is going to be beating folks up. LJ Scott is an absolute beast. Yep. He is a beast. Their quarterback, Brian Lewerke, however you say that. Yeah. Uh, he's fantastic. He's he's a game manager, right? He can throw the football, but like all he does is take care of the football. That's what he does. Uh, they've only got three starters back on D. Uh, nope, I'm looking at the wrong thing. Sorry. Schedule uh, sets up well. Talent may not be there, although they do have the experience. Uh, and they've got one of the best secondaries in the country. So they they were led by uh, David Duvall. And so they're good. I love Mark Antonio. You know that. I've got him nine and three. I got him losing to all three of the juggernauts. To Ohio State, Michigan, and Penn State. Schedule wise, nobody did either one of these teams favors. Michigan, Michigan, talk about LSU, Alabama. We always have a bye week before we play each other every year. Um, before other big games, we try to throw a cupcake yeah, in Mich- there. Michigan State's bye week is before hang on, at Indiana. Hang on. <laughs> Mich- Michigan plays Wisconsin before Michigan State. Michigan State plays at Penn State before Michigan State. Yeah. For Michigan. And then at least Michigan's going to bye week after that bloodbath that's going to be. Uh, Michigan State's got to play Purdue after that, man. I mean, it wouldn't shock me for Purdue to come in there and take that W just because. Man, I, we'll that's get a to, hard game. We'll get to Purdue in the next but division. That's a, but, but that's man. a hard game, right? No, it's a hard game. I mean, I'm, you're, I'm you're talking you. about two teams. That, that's one of those – train. I know we're trying to go faster. Yeah. That's one of those training stable games. Like, everybody's in the trainer after this game. Yeah, you're you're right about that. You're right about that. Next up, Ohio State. Over-under is 10 and a half. I wouldn't be touching this – with a 10-foot pole, man. Like, there's a, there's no way I'm t- – because it could be 10 wins, it could be 11 wins, and I think it's going to come down between those two, and it might have to do with how many games Urban Meyer misses, right? So, let's uh, – Well, they get to start off the season pretty soft 
If if they give Urban a two game, if they do a two game, then that's they it. Get like, Oregon State and Rutgers. They've got a pretty easy schedule, even pretty playing easy. at Michigan State and at Penn that's State. A joke. Uh, but everything else is basically at home, right? So that's that's why I'm saying it's pretty easy. Uh, Dwayne Haskins replaces JT Barrett, or at least we think he does. Like it could be Tate Martell. Uh, in 2018, uh, I don't know where I'm at. Oh, here. They went undefeated in 2012, right? 2014, they won the national championship. 2016, they made the playoff. It's another even year. This is a playoff year for them. Everything kind of goes in in circles for them. Even years are good for them. Uh, Everybody talks about J.K. Dobbins at running back. But look, Mike Weber, if he had been healthy, like, he is an absolute beast. So look out for that guy. They got uh, three or four offensive linemen starting that are coming back. Like that. Nick Bosa and Chase Young on the defensive line. You're not going to get better than that. Five returning starters on defense, but they got a ton of experience. Look, what's, I've what's got a record. At, it, depending on Urban Meyer's Just suspension. Give me, give me a number. I got them 10 and 2. I got them 9 and 3. Did any of that hinge on Urban Meyer? Nope. I did really mine. before Urban. I don't care if he's there. I think they're going to beat the cupcakes, and there is a loss there that I have, which is the TCU loss. I think they're going to go to Gary Patterson. Yeah. And I think Gary Patterson is going to say, I don't have the boys you have. I don't have the horses you have, but I'm a better football coach than you. I've got Ohio State losing at TCU, but I think it will be a win if that is the first game that Urban Meyer comes back. I think that's – The fact that they have a month and a half prepare for that game because their first two games won a total combined of like two games last year – yeah, Rutgers and Oregon State, both at home. Like, that's garbage. That's just such garbage. I got them losing at Penn it's State. It's two power five opponents. Like I think, <laughs> oh, my God. I'm about to knock you out. I'm not chair. an Ohio State apologist. You, I'm you, just yeah, saying. Yeah, you are, because they're the same as Alabama. That, they're just in a no, different conference. It, they're literally like your cousin. Me being an Alabama fan, I'm supposed to hate Ohio no, you're State. Not. You're supposed to defend them, because every time they get in a situation. I'm calling if, Ohio State like I see it. If that's they all get I'm out of it, it means Alabama's going to get out of it. So, Look, anyway. Yeah, I think if Urban Meyer comes back for the TCU game, I think they win. If he's not back in time for the TCU game, I think they lose. I, I, I think that's I think the they only win that one. game no matter what. I think I'll, Gary Patterson's better coach than them. Penn State. I've got go them to losing State. at Penn State. They're going to get their butt whipped in that game. They will win out the rest of the way. I would love to see Michigan State beat them. I, I think there's. I think Michigan State's schedule is just too hard. Yeah. Um, and I think they're going to go in. They're going to go in the horseshoe. They're going to be feeling great. And they're going to have all kind of swagger. And I think Jimmy Harbaugh is going to come in, and I think he's going to blast them. I disagree. Until Harbaugh beats Ohio State, especially on the road, I got to call Ohio State to win that one. That's fine. Uh, so I've got Ohio State ten and two, but I've got them winning the division. So every time you have to wait until you see it, you're always going to lose that game until you see it. That's, and I'm okay with that. I'm going to win it this year, and I'm going to win it next year. I'm going to win it the year after that. More more times than not, I will be correct, but. I've, Penn I've been, State, what do you got? <laughs> Penn State, over-under is nine and a half. I got them going over. I got them going over, too. Man, that's a tough over-under. But yeah, I, got I, I, don't, uh, I don't think that they're going to miss Joe Moorhead that much. The guy that is, uh, that is in there, uh, what's the offensive coordinator's name? Rain? But Franklin's an offensive guy, though, right? Yeah, Franklin's Franklin, an offensive Franklin's guy. Franklin's an offensive guy. Franklin's an offensive guy. He, whenever the head coach does what the coordinator did that left, I never worry about it. I think Saquon I, Barkley I never. Saquon Barkley is a special, special talent. I think I got that's that. gonna be But big. Trace McSorley really is big. a fantastic quarterback. And look, uh the quarterback that they've got coming in behind him, Miles Sanders, he is gonna be a breakout star. Breakout star. But, but they, you they, they've got a great said, offensive line. You and I kind of said this last year. Like, Barkley deserved all the accolades that he got. Yeah, but Trace McSorley's great. He took away from Trace McSorley. Trace, Trace is a really good quarterback. They're going to be fine offensively. Yeah. I think they're going to be really good. Two games you got them losing. Uh, the two games that I have Penn State losing are... Big boy uh, games or you got them slipping up? Up, I got two in a row. Two big boy games. Me too. I've got them, uh, let's see, losing at Michigan. Mm-hmm. And then because they lost at Michigan, I've got them losing to Wisconsin at home. Me too. Me too. That's Me, kind right, of ridiculous. Now, this right? is scary that you and I are seeing. There's eye a, to eye on a, Penn State. Well, there's a team that we, we kind of feel a lot about too. Uh, let's move on from Penn State. Uh, we both got them at 10-2. and two. In the wasteland of this division. Rutgers. 
Congratulations. I have Rutgers. They're over under is four. I got them even with that. I got them four wins. They yeah. went they went four and eight last year. I got them doing the same thing this year. Got them two and ten. Now they win two. There's a lot games. of this non conference games. There's a lot that could be an issue here because there's like a credit card fraud issue going on. They could have some guys suspended early. Uh, it could. I don't think it's going to cost them anything in some of these games. Well, um, the only game it could cost them is the. Texas State game or the Buffalo game. Yeah, because, they, look, they're losing at Ohio State. I think they lose at Kansas. I don't think they lose at Kansas. I've got them winning at Kansas because I just don't trust David Beatty. I don't, I don't trust care. Kansas. I don't care. That, I mean, my Rutgers, God, they've won one game every this, year for – I'm about to say something that's inappropriate. I'm not going to do that. I could get in trouble. <laughs> Those two teams playing each other is a, is a damn sham. What, Kansas and Rutgers? Yes. Why is that a sham? I, well, I guess it's not. It's just a pillow fight. It's it's a pillow fight, it's, but it, at it's least better it'll be than more Oklahoma competitive. saying, "Hey, we're going to go to the Big Ten and play a play a Big Ten team and get a W and go beat Rutgers because that's what they're good at." Exactly, exactly. Um, I've got them beating. All right, so I've got them starting out three and one: Texas State <laughs> at Kansas and Buffalo. So, Although you, I think Buffalo could the, end up being great because you've got the Kansas win. Okay, so and then I've got, got them beating Illinois, yeah. but then losing everything else. All right, so. That's enough record talk. All right, so you've got Michigan winning the uh, the division, and I've got Ohio State. I got Michigan winning it. I like it. All right, from there we'll move on to the Big Ten West. All right, it is time Big Ten West preview time. Not I as like exciting it. as the Big Ten East. No, it's just not as many big names, but it's still exciting. Uh, okay. Like to me, it's exciting. Yeah, no. We get to talk about our West Lot Pirate Boys. No, that's right. That's right. They're, they're, I like a lot of the schools in the West. <laughs> I do like a lot of these schools. It's look. It's a, it's a smaller go at it. We got some new faces. We got all kind of different stuff. Um, we'll start out with Illinois. Just going to get that out of the way. Over under. Over under for Illinois is three and a half. Huh. Which is amazing. They went two and ten last year. Vegas seems to think they'll be a game and a half better. I, I just don't think that Vegas ever likes making college teams less than three. Yeah, you're probably right. I got them two and ten. I got them three and nine. You got them three. Who? Who are I don't, you? I have no idea, Gary. I'm just just telling you, okay. Who have you got them beating? Kent State, Western Illinois, and Rucker. You, you think they're going to be? They're going to win at Rutgers? Rutgers He's hasn't won a conference. Got away. Rutgers Pis- hasn't won a conference. Pis- got away. How do you it's, say it's that? Garbage. How do you? It's garbage. <laughs> I will never. I will never. I'll tell you this. I'll never pick. Lovey Smith team. doesn't just go into New Jersey and come out with a win. That don't happen. He so, was an NFL coach. Rutgers is so? a trash bag. That's, it, Rutgers went four and eight last year. All right. Let me know whenever Lovey goes four and eight. We've spent too much time on <laughs> Illinois already. Next up is Iowa. I love this team. Now they're over Kurt, under seven Kurt and a half. Ferentz is one of my favorite coaches. So the the Big Ten, I have a lot more coaches that I like than I dislike. I was over under seven and a half. Last year they were eight and five. I've got them nine and three. Got them nine and three. You and I have seen the Big Ten pretty pretty dang close. I think I think you're probably right. What are, they, the, what are the big games that you have them? Either well, here, hold on, hold on. Let's let's go through why we like them so much. They got seven offensive starters back. Oh, yeah. Nathan Stanley is back. Uh, they've also got four of the top six receivers coming back. Akram Wadley's gone. Yeah. So it, that and that's a problem. They have the best receiver gone, but they've got a bunch but coming out. Kirk Ferentz always finds running back, so that's I'm not right. worried about that. Uh, they've got three or five starters back on the offensive line. Look for Torin Young and Ivory Kelly uh, Martin to split carries. So, Ivory, uh, whatever his name is, Martin, that dude last year was a, a bowling ball when he got the ball. Like, his yards per carry average was insane. They have six defensive starters back. They're replacing all three linebackers, but they got three or four back on the D-line and three or four back in the secondary. They've got experience. they got leadership back. That's a big deal. I've got Iowa losing to Wisconsin, and I almost had that as a W. Um, I got them losing to Wisconsin, losing at Penn State, and d- 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 oh, I got them losing to Iowa State. And I know that's kind of ridiculous. Yeah, but at, this game always like no, Iowa's always, always good, and it's always just a ridiculous game. And they lose to Iowa State when they're supposed to beat them, and they they beat them when they're supposed to lose to them, and that's just a weird rivalry. I don't understand it, but I think that because they went into Iowa State last year. I think Iowa State's going to be amped up in week two for this one. 
Get, give me Iowa State to win that one. So we got the same record. We've only got one win loss that's the same. Okay. I got them beating Wisconsin. Okay. And that would make perfect sense because it's well, it's, it's a home at game. Wisconsin and they No, it's not at Wisconsin. I mean, it's, it's at a, Iowa. Yeah. And it's they take one great team every year. Bring them into Iowa and don't just beat them. They kick the crap out of them. I, I think they're going to do that to Nebraska at the end of the year. Well, but I actually yeah. have them losing to Nebraska. I think Scott Frost is a good coach, and I think at the end of the year, I trust him more than I trust him at the beginning of the year. I don't know if I trust him at Iowa. It's just, I don't think it's giving weekend. Well, and, and I mean, I could be easily wrong on this. You know I don't like picking the actual games. I just want to give you a record and kind of get out of it. Um, the the hold on, Where are we at? So, I've got them. Penn State, we have. Okay. I've got the Nebraska. And I actually have them losing at Purdue. You, you've got <laughs> – wait a minute. What? I've got them losing at Purdue. you got them losing at Purdue. That is the most Iowa Kurt Ferentz thing to do. Yeah, you're probably right. They lose. All right, so I've got them losing at home to Iowa State. They, you've got them losing at, at Purdue. Purdue. Here's the deal. Every year they will lose one or two games on, to somebody they should just beat the crap out of. Yeah. And somebody who's a double-digit favor than them will come in and they'll beat them by 40. This has happened for the last decade of me watching Kurt Ferentz at Iowa. Yeah, it happened it, definitely last year with the Ohio State game. I find them incredibly entertaining to watch. I like them a lot. and But they're, they're predictable in the sense of I know what's going to happen big picture. You just never know when it's going to happen, which makes even the bad games kind of exciting because this could be the game they blow. Yeah. Uh, Minnesota, we'll move on to them. We'll, we'll roll through them. Minnesota, uh, they went five and seven last year. Their over under is six. I've got them going over. All right, I got them going under. I got them one game less than last year. All right, so you four and eight. You got them four and eight. Yeah, you game, don't like PJ Fleck. One game after last. I mean, I just think it's going to take time. I think that conference is better than. I don't know. I mean, you might be right. Look, they got seven starters back on offense, seven starters back on defense. Uh, the you redshirt could, freshman uh, Tanner Morgan. Uh, he's there's a JUCO dual threat named Vic Vera Montez. That's battling for the quarterback job, both of which are P.J. Fleck guys. That's a yeah. good thing. So as soon as he gets his guy in there, that's going to be good. They, their top three receivers are back. Uh, running back Rodney Smith, over 1,000 yards last year. They got four out of five offensive linemen returning. Six of their top nine tacklers are back on defense, including all three starting linebackers. It is a tough schedule, though. That was what I was going to get into. Their first three games, two of them, they're all non-conference, but two of them... Fresno State and Miami, Ohio are perennially like those little guys you don't want to play. In Miami of Ohio, those kids go into in and, and the University of Ohio. Yeah. Both recruit just like the Big Ten. These are all the rejects that didn't get into the Big Ten. And when they play Big Ten teams, they they, amp they up. give them all they want. I've got I got them I think they're gonna lose one of those two games. I'm not saying they're gonna lose which one? I don't know. See, their first three are at home. I think P.J. Fleck will have these guys amped up. I think they're going to win all three of those. I don't know, man. Um, but Miami of Ohio, if they win the first two, I think they lose, and I would bet money line action on the Miami-Ohio game. That's just, a, that's just a thing that happens. Those MAC teams don't like these Big Ten teams because they think they're better than them. It's the same thing when big boy teams come into Memphis. You think you're better than us, and we send you home with L's. That's it, true. It it happens all the time. We recruit against the same kids. We're not a whole lot different. The money you make and the money we make is light years not comparable, but when we line up man on man, we're not afraid. I got them losing at home to Iowa, at Ohio State, at Nebraska. Then I've got them losing at home to Northwestern and losing at Wisconsin. I mean, so I've got, got them seven and five. I got them eight losses. I'm not going to go through all of them, but – what I found most interesting was... I think that you and I are going to be very different on Purdue. Uh, probably. I think we're going to be very different on Purdue this year. We'll get there. We'll, we'll get down there. Um, but either way, uh, let's move on. Let's move to Nebraska. Over under is six this year. Nebraska went da, 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 four and eight last year. I'm a huge Scott Frost fan. Four I do think it's going to take time eight. to get like real good level. Well, that offense has to get clicking, right? But, but I think he's an exceptional coach yeah i think he is too uh nebraska's got seven starters back on offense eight starters back on defense does that none matter, of that though? matters anything I was just about to because say, does that matter no because it, one it means they've got experience 
but they don't have experience with this coach. So it, what are the chances that they are the starters? I mean, um, when you've got a coach that's going to run an offense this drastically different. Well, you, the I, biggest thing is the quarterback well, position, okay, right? And yeah. and they've got a true freshman, Adrian Martinez, that looks like he's going to win the quarterback that's job. Right. And that, so that's Scott's guy. Yeah. So, so top five running backs all return. They only lose two of their top eight receivers. Nine upperclassmen are starting on defense. I'm not getting into starters and whatnot, no. but like nine upperclassmen will be starting on defense. And that's a good thing because you've got guys that understand how to work, how to teach the younger guys, all that good stuff. Who you got? Uh, I have Nebraska going seven and five. I got them three games better than they were last year. I got them seven and five too. I was really close going six and six. And you want to know why? Why is that? There's a non-conference game in there of a coach that I think is better than him. Ah, uh, you are talking about Neil Brown at Troy. I Neil, I know they went into LSU, and maybe I'm a little biased and skewed. Neil Brown's a really good coach, and they are going to be ready. They're going to say, "Hey, this is our Super Bowl," just like Baton Rouge was. And it would not shock me if he goes into Nebraska and, and comes away with a W. I think that because that game is right before Michigan, I could see it. I, that, that, that would but not shock me at all. When they, and it's right after they play Colorado at home. Yeah. But I do think that Scott Frost is smart enough to realize He's like, a good we got to win the games that we know That's we're right. supposed to win. The, yeah, I, I'm not saying they're going to lose that game. I've got them winning it. I've got them 7-5. and five. If they finish 6-6, six and six, it would not shock me. If Troy is, if Tro- is one of the They losses. could still finish 7-5. and five. They could. I think that that's a easily winnable game for Troy. I've got them losing at Michigan, at Wisconsin, at Northwestern, all the big at teams Ohio are State, and at Iowa. Oh, and Northwestern. Okay. Our so I've, I've got I've got all of their road games as losses. Yeah. I think they go undefeated at home. I think they they I've got them beating Michigan State. See, I I, I can't see that. <laughs> You're like I can't pull that one. I can't do that one. But I love. But I I'm a but D'Antonio. I got them going over the six. I'm, I'm in I'm in the tank with D'Antonio. I don't know that I would touch the six because of the. I've got them winning the Troy game, and that game just – I probably will be betting Troy in that. And whatever the line is, they're going to be catching points. Yeah, they'll definitely be catching points. I'll be taking whatever the points are. So, All right, let's move on to Northwestern. Our guys. Oh, Westlot Pirates, boys. Yeah. All about it, all about it. If you haven't heard their podcast, go check it out, Westlot Pirates. Northwestern's over-under this year is six. Last year, Northwestern went 10-3. and three. They went 7-2 and two in conference. Unbelievable. And they're over under six. They lost a lot of talent. They had a they, lot of seniors. They, they last really year, did. Right? What, what do you have them at? I got them at six and six. Look, I got them at seven and five. Okay. I, got we're, them I mean, we're not, I mean, they, I got a couple um, of games that could go either way, and that you know whatever. Look, they got seven starters back on offense and seven starters back on defense. Like that's that's a big thing for experience for a Pat team that won yeah. ten games last year. Yeah, quarterback Clayton Thorson returns. He uh, he got hurt late. Running back Jeremy Larkin takes over for Justin Jackson. Their top two receivers are back. Four out of five are back on the offensive line. Uh, they lose four of their top seven tacklers on defense, though, and the schedule is pretty tough. Um, they've got Michigan, Michigan State, Notre Dame, Wisconsin, and at Iowa. And What do you think of the Duke game? See, that's, that's part of the problem. Smart kids coming on. This is smart kid on smart kid violence here. I think it's the fact that it's at Northwestern at North, definitely I, helps them. And I, and, and, you, you know. But that's a tough, like for them, that's really tough, that's tough. opening two-game stretch, right? I like Because they play like at Purdue. A lot, though. They play at Purdue the first Thursday of the year, August 30th. Yep. That's a tough ask. And that road game to open the season. Those Thursday night road games are tough. But I, I'll tell you what. I've got them beating Purdue. I've, here are my losses. They got five losses to me. I got losing uh, at home to Michigan. Michigan at State, Michigan back State. Back. Uh, I've got them beating Nebraska. Um, I've got them losing to Wisconsin, got them losing to Notre Dame, losing at Iowa, but then a win at Minnesota and a win against Illinois to close out. So I got them winning the first uh, three games of the year. Then they got a bye week, and then I think they lose at home to Michigan. Yeah. I'm I'm just up in the air on either the Purdue. I've got them losing to Purdue or Duke. I think they'll lose one of Man, those do games. You, do you have just Purdue because, losing a game? Well, yes. <laughs> yeah. It seems like every one of these has been like, look, I got them losing to Purdue. I, I have, like, I, I do have Purdue. We are going to be a lot different, probably. Though. I think so. We're on them now. That's. Uh, are you ready to jump in? I'm. I got them seven and five. Let's talk about Jeff Brom. I over, like Jeff. Brom. Over under is six. I've got him at seven and five. I like Jeff Brom. I like Jeff Brom a lot. I like Jeff Brom too. But I will tell you this: last year they won a lot of games with their defense, right? I'm okay with that. They, they won a lot of games with defense, and. Here's the deal. They went seven and six last year, lost the bowl game. Um, look, nine starters are back on offense. 
Only four are back on defense. I do think the offense will get better. Well, that's it. But the defense led them to wins last year, and the schedule is way more difficult this year. They are going to be an underdog in nine games this year. Uh, none of that stuff matters. Jeff Brom is a good coach. Yes, they're they're losing guys. They won on defense last year. They won't win on defense this year. He has another year to put his offense in to get his offense going, to get his guys running that offense. That doesn't scare me. I got him 4-8. and eight. And that's fine. And, and I'll tell you this. Like, if they finish 6-6, six and six, I wouldn't be shocked. I would be a little shocked if they were 5-7. and seven. And anything worse than that, I think we're pretty far off on. I, I, I could see it. I could see it. I think Jeff, look, but you know how much value I put in coaching. I've, I've got them losing. I'll go on and tell you the losses. And none of these are crazy. Uh, I've got them losing at home to Northwestern first night of the year. I've actually got them losing to Missouri. But, yeah, you're crazy on Missouri, though. You're just – I don't think I'm I think crazy. history is going to show that you're wrong on Missouri. I think Missouri is going to come out and throw the football all over the field That's because fine. their defense is That's not fine. as good this I don't, year. I don't, I don't know that they have NFL receivers. I could be wrong on I that. do have them beating Boston College, who I think is a dark horse to win their division in the ACC. Dark, yeah, that defense is real good, yeah. by the way. Um, I've got them losing at Nebraska, losing to Ohio State, losing at Michigan State, losing to Iowa, losing at Minnesota, losing to Wisconsin – and then I've got them winning at Indiana to end the year. But see, you're 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 taking, like I said, that Iowa win. I have them winning at Iowa, but but Iowa does this every year. They lose. Yeah. They're going to lose to somebody. Yeah. Why can't it be Purdue? I'm with you. And it could easily be. I think it's going to be a home game. They're going to lose actually because that's just what they do. That's entirely possible. They just they just lay an egg somewhere. So you ready to move to Wisconsin? Let's go to Wisconsin. Wisconsin. I can't believe we're going to have the same record for so many of these teams. And we Look, didn't talk beforehand. With, we no, we really don't talk stuff. before. No, we don't um, compare notes. Wisconsin went 13-1 and last year, 9-0 and in the Big Ten until the uh, Big Ten championship game. Uh, their over-under this year is 10. They've got nine offensive starters back, including quarterback Alex Hornibrook, running back Jonathan Taylor, who went over 2,000 yards last year, They've got six of their top receivers back. They've only got four defensive starters back. Uh, but three of their four leading tacklers are returning, including that's, senior that's, linebacker yeah. Ryan Conley. Yeah. He's going to be a beast this year. Yep. Um, I wanted to give them more losses. But you, I wanted to. But you couldn't find them. But I couldn't find them. Couldn't even. I, I just – I don't see – look. But I didn't it, want to. I love this team. Who do you have them losing to? I got them losing to – at Iowa. They're the one team. What? They're the one team that Iowa is going to come in. He's going to be a dog. They're they're going to be favorites, and, and and they're probably no. Sorry, Wisconsin's going to be a road favorite going yes. into Iowa, probably. And Iowa's going to beat their. Look, I've got them beating Iowa, beating Nebraska, but then I've got them losing at Michigan. See, I got them beating Michigan. I've got them winning at Northwestern. That, that's Michigan's only loss. I've got them winning at Penn State. I got him win. No, we both have him eleven and one, Gary. I, I, We're both just, going over, and 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 if they my loss is at Michigan. I will tell you this: if they went undefeated, it would not shock me. If they don't go undefeated, I could see Michigan going undefeated. Do you think Paul Christ gets enough credit? Nope, he does not at all. I love Wisconsin. Now you know this: I have been a Wisconsin believer since I was a fat kid watching football, and every head coach that takes over up there puts 500 yards of offense on the ground and their offensive linemen are all the best offensive linemen in the NFL. And, and I just, it's one of the reasons I worship Joe Thomas. I watched him be a four year starter at Wisconsin, graduate, go to the Browns, number one pick. And, and I've watched him his entire career. I, I love this team. They don't change. The head coach changes. They don't change. No, I think, I think you're probably right. I think you're probably right. Uh, we both got Wisconsin winning the division. So that means we have Wisconsin and Michigan playing in the championship game. Well, I've got Ohio State. But, yeah, remember, I've got Ohio State 10-2, and but I've got them beating Michigan. But what other loss do you have him? TCU. Oh, it's, not it's not a not conference, conference loss. Yeah. So, yeah. So, Ohio State and Wisconsin or Michigan and Wisconsin. Michigan, Either way, we've got Wisconsin. Michigan Michigan Wisconsin. Michigan going to the playoffs. <laughs> That wouldn't surprise me. I love you, Wisconsin. Oh, that wouldn't class. surprise me at all. All right, Big Ten. All 
All right, we got the bear on with us. He is Chris Felica from ESPN's College Game Day and the Behind the Bets podcast. You can follow him on Twitter at Chris Felica. Bear, we'll jump right in. When are you coming down to Mississippi to check out our new sports book? Oh, I, I, I was very disappointed I didn't get the invite with uh, Danny Sheridan to come down there and do the uh, do the grand opening. But yeah, I'm <laughs> looking at the schedule. I'd love to be able to get down. If we, gosh, if we could uh, get either back down to Oxford or, or Starkville, we we love both places when we got finally got there for the first time, and uh, I'd love to get on back. It's, and I know LSU isn't too far from uh, from Biloxi, so you you know making a trip over there for one day might not be too crazy. But yeah, Oxford is no. not far from Tunica at all. So I, no, that, that, it's, uh, to keep keep that in the back of the, see that, that's a new uh, a new addition now when we have these college game day uh, road trips and if they get into town on Thursday night and and got, got nothing going on maybe uh, maybe have to do a little pre pod after a little dinner and uh, sneak out for a little late night a uh, little late night tour of some of the some of these uh, new sports books in some of these states that now allow uh, now now legal sports where you just to kind of check it out. Now, I, I went down to the one at the Gold Strike in Tunica. So the grand opening was August 1st, and it's it's a lot smaller than a normal Vegas sports book. But, you know, for us down here that have not had it, you know, here in Memphis, and, and the fact that there's nothing even close to it anywhere in the southeast, it's, uh, it's a pretty big deal. It's it's really nice, really well put together. They, uh, they've done a good job so far. I'm curious what the other sports books are going to do, but uh, Gold Strike knocked on it first, so... So we're we're all in with them right now. <laughs> good. Well, no, yeah, yeah, there's nothing wrong with that, and that's that's important. A, they did a good job putting it together, and B, it's just going to be good. Curious to see what kind of prices they put up. It, it, it's funny. I was talking with uh, Brad Edwards the other day, and we we both kind of got a chuckle at uh, him growing up in Mississippi. Said uh, the, the great thing about those sports books is that that Ole Miss and Miss State fans certainly have no problem uh, getting angry and betting against their team, kind of just like LSU <laughs> fans have kind of no problem betting against their team. So I'd be curious to see what kind of numbers they get up there. Probably get some pretty good two way action maybe on uh, on their in state teams. And you know, I was surprised because when you saw the the Jersey sports books and whatnot come out, uh, the juice was a little bit high, right? Uh-huh. So at, down here, it it has not been that crazy. There's still a lot of uh, you know minus one tens and whatnot. It's it's been pretty pretty standard. I was kind of surprised. Well, that that that's good, and I wonder if that had to do with uh, seeing some of the negative PR and some of the mistakes that. Some of these books uh, may. I mean, you, you can't be offering a thirty-five cent line in baseball. I mean, it, 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 it's just ridiculous. Uh, some of the prices, but hey, people are so starved nationally. If you don't live uh, in, in Las Vegas to be able to bet on things like this, that people are willing to. I, I just want to bet on my team and not really be able to shop and and look for a better price. So it's good to hear that uh, maybe the fact that they weren't the first means that they may have. Uh, done it a lot better than some of the, the the states that first rolled out i agree and and you know it's the only sports book that's open in tunica right now over at gold strike they're going to have horseshoe they're going to have uh sam's town and whatnot but you know the fact that they were the first ones and, and the juice isn't crazy it it plays well for uh for the better so uh let's jump into college football week one game day is making their first trip to south bend since 2012 and only the second visit since 05 was there a concerted effort to get back to a campus location as opposed to you know one of the normal neutral site that we've seen in the past few years, or yeah. did the schedule just work? I, I think the schedule just worked. I mean, I, I think the, the most compelling game nationally is the Auburn Washington game in Atlanta, just because of Auburn playing their last two games in that building and losing. Uh, Washington kind of carrying the weight of the entire conference. Uh, on their shoulders with with, with that game, but in, in any time you can be on campus for a uh, for, for the season opener, I, I think it works um, as opposed to being outside a pro stadium. It's a better atmosphere. 12, 12, it's totally better atmosphere. It's a it's a game that took the year off last year, and and there's still a ton of juicy storylines uh, both on and off the field with Michigan and Notre Dame. So uh, on campus rivalry, Harbaugh, sign us up. <laughs> now, I, w- I want to talk about the spread for just a minute on that game. The opening line I saw over the summer at, at most sports books was, or anybody that had it early, was Notre Dame minus six, minus seven, somewhere around there. And now, it, across the board, Michigan is favored by three. It, is it normal for an opening line to move that much, or or has something happened that, that I just don't know about? No, it, that was a that was a very interesting line move. 
that um, uh, uh, Chris Andrews in, in South Point, I think, were the first to put up some of those games of the year. And it's funny. He had essentially Notre Dame favorite as a 6 7 point favorite. And I looked at the our ESPN FPI type numbers, and, and our numbers kind of had Notre Dame is right around a six point favorite or so. So, they, so his numbers and his power ratings uh, kind of kind of jive with what we had. But uh, I think at the time there was a lot of uncertainty with Notre Dame uh, in terms of uh, running back, losing Josh Adams, lose two top ten offensive linemen against a really good defense. And just kind of the way Notre Dame finished uh, finished last year, maybe a little sour taste in the mouth, and the fact that uh, I think people thought it was too big of a number, and they saw value with, with Michigan, kind of the excitement about Shea Patterson getting eligible, everyone coming back on that defense, and I, I think they saw a little bit of an opportunity to to get on six or six and a half or seven, uh, whatever it might be. And now the interesting thing will be any of those people holding uh, Michigan plus seven type numbers will they in turn, flip it around now and now play Notre Dame at plus three and kind of maybe try and catch themselves a little bit of a middle. I was curious if, if Shea Patterson had that much of an impact because uh, he was he was ruled eligible, what, in June, I guess it was. Um, I, I thought maybe that might be it. You know, if it, But I, I, I've just never seen a line move 10 points that at least this early, especially not knowing yeah, that, what two teams are. That was, a, that was a big one, and I think the Oklahoma-Texas game was another game that moved a lot as well. I, I think OU might have been uh, a 14 or a 15 point favorite somewhere in that, in that range, and I think that got bet down to under a touchdown as well. And I, I think a lot of people saw, saw that saw that number high. And and, and, and look, that was that was one when uh, Gil Alexander had me on behind the bench, and I saw that number, and we kind of went through some early season lines that kind of stood out. And, and I was away and got back, and I said, uh, I can guarantee you that this one is no longer. Uh, four teams, because just look at what's happened the last few years. They've all been one-score games, and Texas has had a real chance to win. So uh, that, that that I thought was a, a crazy number, too. All right, now moving back to game day, let, let's talk about New York last year. What I didn't get a chance to talk to you afterwards, but what brought that on? You know, Would you imagine you'll be doing more shows from non-game day locations in the future? Uh, I, I think what brought it on a few years back, we had talked about potentially doing a show from New York because of just the, the sheer volume of college alums from everyone in the country. That I mean, you, you, Alabama, it doesn't matter, Alabama, Clemson, Ohio State, Michigan, USC, Texas, you, you, name the, you, you name a college grad and so many of them live and have jobs in New York City and, resi- and just spend their Saturdays watching college football at the numerous college landmark bars that, that each school has set up with their alumni association. And uh, we, we tried to do it a few years back, but uh, but I think we were just a little bit late in the planning. And then uh, we, we kind of looked at the off se- the schedule last off season and pinpointed a couple of weeks where it potentially could have worked. And uh, that was the weekend we came up with. And I, I thought the show turned out great. It was a really cool scene. Uh, it got a lot of po- a, a lot of buzz, both positive and negative, from people saying, "How could you be in New York City on a college football Saturday?" Uh, with, with nothing going on, but but I think it was a really it was really a bad week. <laughs> it, it, it was. I, I think I think Penn State Iowa was the game that uh, was the ABC primetime game that week that pr- potentially could have been the best game to to go for uh, if we wanted to do a show from site. But it was a really cool scene, and, and I think we're going to continue to look at potential different ways to to do the show, whether it's from uh, another whether we maybe one year we do it from Chicago or maybe we do one show from Vegas uh, or from that wherever uh, that that might now be now Vegas a, uh, would a, be interesting especially right uh, now with with sports betting being such a big topic <laughs> I mean that would be fantastic <laughs> now, now we now we now we now we haven't thought about that but maybe maybe one year we'll uh, the Pac-12 championship game will be at the new Raiders Stadium out there in, in Vegas and maybe ESPN will have that Pac-12 title game and maybe Game Day will take a trip. Uh, I, I can dream, right? <laughs> like, get, just get you out there on their dime. That, that's not bad. I can get down with it. Yeah, exactly. But but even if it's not like a city like that, I think uh, some of our better shows are at places where either we've never been or haven't been in a long time. Like, like the show we did from Fargo a few years back was great. Uh, the first time we went to James Madison, and the second time for that matter, uh, was great. Well, we did Harvard, Yale. That was fantastic. Uh, it, it's a new experience for us on the show. And it's a new experience for fans. 
So uh, it kind of energizes everybody. It's seeing something that we haven't seen before. Uh, it's, it's kind of a cool experience. Now, you, you brought up looking at the schedule like in the future. Uh, and I've asked you this before, but I want to ask it again anyway, just so that we've got it again. Do you guys have a list of games already for the entire season that you're that you're watching closely that that you will possibly visit? Like I know things change every week, but but do you already have a list like from September all the way through November? Oh yeah, the, the, the first thing I do in January uh, once the regular season ends or the, or the championship game ends is I will. Uh, I will go, start going through the, the schedule for the following year and just kind of going through team by team and put together uh, a potential uh, week by week games of note that uh, might wind up. And just so if there are some places that maybe we need to do a new site survey or a place we haven't been, uh, our operations team and our travel team can get on that. So, yeah, I can literally tell you right now, like every week, uh, I have at least four or five games written down from uh, September 8th. Through the uh, through the end of the season, and September eighth is kind of a, a a good weekend too because you get USC Stanford, uh, which is an intriguing game. You got Clemson A and M, which is obviously with Jimbo and uh, Dabo there. Uh, Chip Kelly going to Oklahoma, uh, and then Georgia South Carolina, which could be potentially a uh, a tricky game for the for the Bulldogs in uh, in Columbia. And then, yeah, we, I, I I can go. Uh, you you pick a date, and I can tell you uh, <laughs> uh, the, the biggest games of the week that week. I got you. And now, is, is there anywhere that you're really hoping to visit this year? Like, that you've already what? looked at and you're thinking, all right, like, we haven't been here in a while. I really want to get out there. Well, I, I'm really – I said, tweeted this out a few weeks back when I was starting to go through some season win totals and some, some, some just some working on some things. And I really can't wait for that Ohio State-Penn State game on September 29th. I know what's gone on off the field is uh, – a completely different story right now, but uh, Penn State at home with the winning trick they have there, having beaten Ohio State there a couple of years ago, kind of gave the game away in Columbus last year. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to that atmosphere as well. If we're looking for somewhere where uh, we, we haven't been before or haven't been for a while, uh, I think that Stanford-Washington game could be really interesting on November 3rd. Uh, that, that could be a, uh, a really cool scene, uh, depending on how things uh, shake down in the uh, ECC. Uh, Miami, Virginia Tech at Lane Stadium in mid to late November could, could be a really cool a cool scene. And what? another interesting uh, a, another interesting uh, site which could be kind of cool is uh, a Notre Dame plays a game at Yankee Stadium this November uh, oh, yeah. against Syracuse. So that might we we had a lot of fun going to, going to uh, Wrigley a few years back. So uh, that could be something maybe uh, potentially throw out there as well. Now, if if both of those teams, of course, do well and whatnot, then you can at least make it. Uh... It justifiable, I guess. Uh, when's do you remember the last time that y'all were in Columbia, South Carolina? Oh gosh, I believe. Oh, let's see. I know we were there for a Tennessee game with Casey Clawson, and I know we oh, were gosh. there for a. Uh, I know we were there for a Georgia game uh, where the Georgia came back late and won. I, I, you know what? I have my. Uh, I got my database pulled right up here because I was working on some show notes for the. Uh, for the South Bend show, so let's pull up all Columbia, South Carolina. Uh, it was uh, wow! I, I would never have guessed. I guess, it's such a memorable show. I forgot all about it. Uh, 2000, September 2014, we were there for a, a Missouri, South Carolina game. Missouri wound up winning uh, 21-20. I remember unranked, that game. Un, 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 yeah. Unranked Missouri versus number 13 South Carolina. That's right. That's right. Okay, and that was uh, that was close to the end of uh, of Spurrier's run there. Um, yeah, I figured that's you know week two. I'm guessing between uh, between Texas A&M and Clemson and Georgia South Carolina because of the way that South Carolina ended last year. You know they're kind of on the upswing a little bit. Uh, they should be fully healthy in week two. I think that's going to be a monster game, just a monster it, game. Yeah, it, it it is especially with look. I I think the world of the recruiting job that Kirby Smart and the Georgia staff has done and the, the players that they brought in, but Sometimes you wonder if losing two guys who were just a security blanket in the backfield with with Chubb and Michelle, uh, you lose a guy like Roquan Smith on that defense. Yeah, maybe they might wind up being more talented this year. Who, who knows how the quarterback situation is going to play out? But uh, sometimes if, if you lose a lot of senior leadership and upperclassmen, uh, maybe early in the season you might be a little bit vulnerable. So uh, while I do think Georgia is more talented, uh, than South Carolina, we, we've seen some games at Williams-Brice in the past where 
Uh, Georgia's gone in there with much better teams, and those games have been uh, a lot closer than anybody would have expected. All right, now you brought up the Ohio State-Penn State game. How much of an impact, it, let, let's say Urban does not get fired, let's say he's he serves a two-game suspension. How much of an impact does that have on win totals, national title odds, Big Ten champion, just game lines in general? Does it have any impact at all? No, it, it, it winds up being just it, it, hypothetically the, the situation throughout. It winds up being a two-game suspension. You're looking at what I think they play Oregon State and then somebody else week two, which is uh, irrelevant before they go to TCU. to uh, TCU to play by, to play Arlington there. So I wouldn't think it would have any. If it winds up being now, it winds up being a four-game suspension, and maybe he misses TCU. And I can't remember if the Penn State game is the fourth game of the year for Penn State's fifth. Or it's the fifth. So maybe, (laughs) maybe, yeah. Coincidentally enough, so that could be. Maybe that might affect it. Maybe a half a game or so. Uh, It's funny. I think one of the bigger things that you can, in terms of betting, uh, I know at South Point they have that big prop out where you can take the the five Power Five conference teams uh, against the field, and Ohio State was one of those five. It's Clemson, Ohio State, Alabama, Washington, Oklahoma, the five teams versus everybody. And it's like minus 320 or something like that, or minus 300 <laughs> to take those five teams versus the field. And, and, and I think maybe on something like that, uh, maybe some betters would be uh, persuaded or could, could think there might be some some value on taking the field because it would include Michigan State, Michigan, Wisconsin, Penn State. Uh, that in, in theory, Ohio State would be a stronger team. But if it's just two games and if he's still the coach, uh, I, I don't think I don't think it's going to affect any of the the, the betting numbers uh, dramatically. But it, the thing is, as well, even if it does turn out where uh, he is ultimately fired over this, talent wise, they're still really really good. And I, I wonder personally uh, how much the line would really move. I, mean, I think a lot of people would probably uh, knee-jerk, immediately jump on under 10.5 or whatever they reposted at. But, gosh, I, I don't know. I mean, M- Michigan still comes to Columbus. The TCU game is on the road, but it's a, a neutral site game, and I guarantee it will be a ton of Buckeye fans there. Uh, Michigan State is late in the year. I mean, they still have a really good coaching staff and a really talented team. Uh, I'll be curious to see ultimately how this plays out over the next couple of weeks. Well, it's, it, even if they even if they don't have Urban, they've still got Kevin Wilson on the offense. They've still got Greg Schiano on the defense. It's and everybody thinks the world of Ryan Day. So, uh, yeah. let, let's talk about the uh, the playoff real quick. I, I know we got you super early right now, so everybody loves Alabama, Clemson, Ohio State, Georgia, so forth and so on. Who are other teams that are maybe outliers that people? might need to pay attention to if they wanted to put a little bit of money just on, on something that might hit? Who would who would you tell them to look at? On teams to reach the playoff? I, yeah, I think just, reach. Uh, just to reach the playoff, I think, I think Washington is obviously a team that, uh, depending on what happens week one, they, they, they could get there. I think even if they were to lose and it's a close game, if they were to run the table in the Pac-12 like they'll be favored to do. Uh, they, they could get there. Notre Dame is a team – uh, that could potentially reach the playoff based on how the committee has uh, treated Notre Dame the last couple of years. It, when Notre Dame has been ranked in the in the top 25 of the committee, they've been viewed more favorably in the committee's top 25 than, say, the AP poll. So, so I think the fact the committee has a favorable view on them uh, with that schedule, with Florida State, uh, Michigan, uh, and a bunch of big games on that schedule. I think Notre Dame. I think they're like eight or nine to one maybe to make the playoff. Yeah, I thought I heard someone say that. That could potentially be. I think that's right. I think that's right. Yeah, that, that, that could potentially be an interesting uh, prop. And, and Penn State, I, I think, is another team from the Big Ten. If you want to take a stand against Ohio State, their schedule sets that, up beautifully, yep, doesn't it? <laughs> you, yep. You view that Ohio State Penn State game in September as kind of a, a tiebreaker, where if Penn State were to win, they would kind of have they would have to lose twice in order for Ohio State to go ahead of them. McSorley's back. I know they lose Saquon Barkley, but they really, really like Miles Sanders, and they've recruited great. Uh, they lose a bunch of guys on defense, which could potentially hurt, but like you said, Michigan State goes to State College. Uh, Wisconsin comes to State College. They have to go to Michigan, but of all of those games, it's probably the one you want to play on the road. Um, so I, I think Penn State could potentially be a uh, a little bit of a price play to maybe reach the playoff. 
All right, now I've got two questions before we let you go. One, who is our group of five team that's going to make a New Year's Six bowl game? I think Boise State is far and away the best team from the group of five this year. Uh, you, you look at Rippon coming back. You look at Alexander Madison, the running back. Uh, everybody on the defense except for Leighton Grand Rush is back. Uh, how they played in the bowl game last year, and how they, actually how they played really late, because they were a little bit in a little bit of a transitional state uh, midway through the year. They got inconsistent play at quarterback. They were really beat up. It, it wasn't a gimme that they were even going to uh, reach the Mountain West Championship game, and, and they wound up getting their act together, playing great, uh, dominated Oregon in the bowl game, and, and they're going to start. They're going to have the big advantage over everybody in that they're going to start the year uh, ranked probably around 15 or 20 or so. And uh, they have a big game at Oklahoma State early in the year. So if they were to win that game, they, then you're going to start to hear a little bit of a momentum. Maybe if they run the table, they could get in the actual playoff. I don't know if I could quite go that far, but they'd have much more. Yeah, they have a much stronger case than, than, than UCF did last year. But I, I think Boise is far and away the best team in the group of five this year. That's, uh, that game in Stillwater is a, a massive game for them. So if they can... If they can sneak that one out, it's, even if they blew them out, if they blew out Oklahoma State, like that would make a little bit of playoff noise, possibly. I I don't think it'll ever happen, but either way, uh, let's let's talk a little gambling before I let you go. I love South Carolina over seven and a half. I've got Florida Atlantic over eight and a half, and LSU under seven and a half as far as win totals. Do you have any win totals that you absolutely love? I listened to uh, to the Behind the Bets podcast. I, there's a bunch on there, so people need to go and listen to that one. But you got a couple of them that you can just tell me right here that you are in love yeah. with right now. Yeah, I'll, I'll share a couple of them that I that I share on the podcast on, on the pod, and, and and I'm looking outside the Power Five for a lot of these because I, I thought by the time I was able to get to the numbers uh, that they weren't the best. Uh, Buffalo was a team from the Mid American Conference that I think uh, over six and a half I, I think is a really good bet. Uh, there's an excellent chance that they go over. I'm sorry, that they go undefeated at home in all six of their home games, and they have a couple of, of the weaker back teams on the road. They also have Rutgers from the Big Ten, and Rutgers is a team that they could potentially compete with because I think they're going to have some suspension issues. Uh, Buffalo got to six last year, and we didn't make a bowl. I think they get to seven this year and get bowl eligible again. Uh, Georgia Southern is a team that uh, was a complete mess last year. They, they kind of strayed from... Uh, the program that had been built up, and Willie Fritz and his assistants, and uh, wanted to make a coaching change last year, bringing back uh, Willie for one of Willie Fritz's assistants midway through the year. They played much better as the year went on. Uh, their win total was five and a half, and, and they could, I think, easily go from uh, from two wins last year back up to six. Uh, if you're looking at an under, I think Central Michigan is a team that uh, they were benefited a lot from close games last year. I think they won four games or four and zero. Oh something like that in games decided by a, less than a touchdown. Uh, the schedule flips on them this year. Uh, somehow they, they beat Western Michigan and Ohio last year. We're really fortunate to do so. Uh, they they really have Jonathan Ward, their running back, coming back, and nothing else. Uh, four and a half is their win total. I think uh, uh, this might finally be a year where Central Michigan misses out on a bowl game. I like it. I like it. All right, he is Chris Felica from ESPN's College Game Day and the Behind the Bets podcast. Uh, you can follow him on Twitter at Chris Felica Bear. We love you. Thank you for joining. Uh, hopefully, we can get you back during the season at some point when it's not so so busy. Absolutely. Look, uh, anytime you guys give me a shout, I'd be happy to uh, chat for all you. Have. Love, right. uh, love talking to you guys. All right, man. We appreciate it. We'll talk to you soon. It's time for the rundown. Remember, check out winningcureseverything.com. You can give us a like on Facebook, facebook.com slash winningcureseverything. You can follow us on Twitter, at winningcures. You can follow myself, at GaryWCE. You can follow me at Chris B. Giannini, C-H-R-I-S-B-G-I-A-N-N-I-N-I. You can also email the show, that's winningcureseverything at gmail.com. And we now have a voicemail line. That number is 551 226 Nine eight nine nine. If you want to call and bash us for talking bad about your favorite team, or praise us, or just tell us about how awesome your team is doing, leave us a voicemail. That number again is 551-226-9899, and we may toss it on the show. Thank you for supporting this show, and until next time... Have a good one, guys. Hey, don't forget, subscribe to the Winning Cures Everything podcast on iTunes, and make sure you leave a review.
For every 25 written five-star reviews we get on iTunes, we are donating to St. Jude's Children's Hospital and Le Bonheur's Children's Hospital in Memphis, Tennessee. So subscribe and review on iTunes, SoundCloud, Google Play, and all your favorite podcast apps. Remember, the Winning Cures Everything podcast. 